Ladies and gentlemen, our student speakers. No matter where you're from, attending the George Washington University changes you. Perhaps the same could be said for any college, but I think it is undeniable that living in the nation's capital, we are faced with one-of-a-kind challenges every day that, whether we realize it or not, have contributed to who we are. Motorcades are no longer something to call home about, but rather an obstacle between you and the other side of Pennsylvania Avenue. We no longer giggle at the words foggy bottom. And although we may try time and time again, we will never actually know what is in Minutia's GW sauce. <laughs> the real challenge, though, has only just begun. Perhaps one day you'll be faced with a new kind of problem, like deciding whether to move away from family for a job, or if your major, what you've dedicated countless hours and too many sleepless nights to, is really what you want to do. It can get overwhelming when there are only a few knowns, would seem like a million unknowns, and Texas Instruments doesn't make a large enough calculator. <laughs> There's one thing I do know. I could not be more confident that the about-to-be GW graduate sitting in front of me today is ready. In every graduation speech I've seen in movies, this is the part where the speaker stands in front of the graduates and exclaims, we finally made it. But I disagree. I don't think we finally made it. I think we've just gotten here. This is when it all really starts. We are at a place in our lives which we will never be at again. So if you take nothing else from my speech today, other than that some engineers are half-decent writers, of course, <laughs> remember the regrets that really eat away at you are from the things you didn't do, not from the things you did. Always wondering what it would have felt like, tasted like, been like, those are the regrets that never go away. Trust that you have the skills to do whatever you want, because whether you believe it or not, I know you do. So class of 2009, I congratulate you and challenge you. In fact, I triple dog dare you to take those risks and live without regret. Now, as we each go our separate ways and exit the George Washington University bubble we have called home for so long, we must remember that today we are not each other's competition, but we are peers and most importantly, friends. So whether you studied engineering, international affairs, human services, business, journalism, or anything in between, from one friend to another, congratulations, good luck, enjoy life wherever it may take you. Thank you. Thank you, President Knapp. My dear fellow graduates, in 1988, when most of you were born, I lived in communist Romania behind the Iron Curtain. At that time, you and I were enemies, representing different ideologies. In 1989, I experienced Eastern Europe's shortest and bloodiest revolution, one week of terrifying violence as Romanian soldiers and citizens rose up to overthrow Nicolae Ceausescu, formerly known as the President of the Socialist Republic of Romania, but in reality, a terrible tyrant. The Romanian uprising was a culmination of the 1989 revolutions that began in Poland and Hungary, continued with the fall of the Berlin Wall, and swept eastward through Czechoslovakia and Bulgaria. Many of you have studied these events. I lived them. Romania is now a thriving democracy in the European Union and a permanent member of NATO. Perhaps more importantly, the United States and Romania are now allies that address the same global challenges together. Thus, I stand before you today as a fellow countryman in more ways than one. It is entirely fitting that the university named for the father of this country holds its graduation cer ceremony on the National Mall between two of the greatest symbols of our democracy, the United States Capitol and the Washington Monument. 
These monuments have a special meaning for me, a first-generation immigrant from a country in the former Soviet bloc. Even though my parents and I had nothing but a suitcase when we arrived in this country in December of 1991, we knew we were in America, the land of opportunity, and that there was an available path for us to take that helped us reach our goal. We overcame the gritty hardship that most immigrants face. And today, I graduate with two master's degrees. <laughs> One of the greatest strengths of our democracy is our ability to overcome periods of adversity. The majority of us have firsthand experience with the current economic situation. And many of us are apprehensive about finding a job that will pay the rent, put food on the table, and repay student loans. In times like these, it's useful to reflect on past periods of hardship and the role that college graduates played in overcoming those challenging times. Students who emerged from college shortly after the Great Depression went to work building the highway system and inventing the earliest computer, while college graduates of the Cold War launched the first communication satellite and invented the internet. As a graduating class, we will overcome adversity again, not just because we are equipped with the skills needed for the jobs of the 21st century, but because we are imbued with the spirit of George Washington, who knew a great deal about triumph over adversity. So I salute you, my fellow graduates, as you leave GW and go forth to take on the world. Some of you will work right here in DC to help operate this great government. Others will return to your hometowns or home countries to work, travel, or study. Whatever your next step is, I wish you success. I will return to my home state of California to take pre-med courses and then head off to medical school. I will also have the thrill of finally becoming an American citizen when I go through this naturalization ceremony later this summer. I could... I congratulate you all on your accomplishments so far and offer you my best wishes as you embark on your destiny. Thank you.